The Equipment Status Report, or ESR, is a great tool to determine what equipment can be fixed and on what priority they should be fixed. And this can be quickly determined by understanding the equipment and operational status data level on the ESR. In our previous video, we discussed how the ESR separates deadlines by unit. Next, we look at each individual piece of equipment within a unit. The equipment level, from left to right, tells us the equipment's model, number, its admin number, or bumper number, serial number, and then its operational status. Besides being FMC, fully mission capable, the operational status will either be NMCM, non-mission capable for maintenance, or NMCS, non-mission capable for supply. And this is a quick way to determine what vehicles are actionable. As a general rule, if a vehicle is NMCM, then the vehicle can be actioned by your maintainers. Usually, you either have all parts on hand to repair the vehicle, or it still needs troubleshooting to identify the issue, so parts can be ordered. If the vehicle is NMCS, it means it requires a part that is not currently on hand before it can be fixed. In future videos, we'll go more in depth on how to validate part statuses and that they are ordered correctly. Moving on the equipment level, next is the equipment description or nomenclature, followed by its equipment readiness code or ERC, which designates if a vehicle is mission critical. Mission critical items, known as pacing items, are identified with a P, often called ERC P. These items are commonly combat platforms such as tanks, Bradleys, and aircraft, but can also be communication or medical systems. Non-pacing or ERC A items are all other pieces of equipment and are identified with an A. While ERC A items are still important, they don't hold the same importance and urgency of an ERC P. Finally is the date and time the vehicle was initially deadlined and the total amount of days it is consecutively spent on the deadline report. As we look at HHC, an important thing to notice is how deadline items are organized in order of priority. Pacing items are displayed first in order of days deadlined, followed by non-pacing items also in order of days deadlined. Finally, any non-reportable items would be placed last in order of priority beneath a dotted line. This allows commanders and maintenance managers to view the most important items first and ensure any item over 30 days receives special attention. So in this example, we see that HHC has one deadline pacer and two deadline non-pacers. Two are NMCS, which means they're waiting apart, and one is NMCM, which means that the vehicle can be actioned by their maintainers. Additionally, there is one vehicle that has been deadlined for over 30 days. They are also placed conveniently in order of priority, pacer item HQ66, followed by a non-pacing item deadline for over 30 days, HHC34 Mike, and finally a non-pacing item deadline under 30 days, HHC35. Of course, the priority of maintenance will include the entire battalion and depend on commander's priorities and upcoming operations, but this simplified example shows as a commander or a maintenance manager can use the ESR to determine how many deadlines are actionable and how to prioritize them in under a minute. In the next video, we'll discuss how to understand technical statuses of faults and their descriptions before moving on to the next subsection of the ESR. For more information on the ESR, review the GCSS Army End User Manual Plus at gcss.army.mil. And for more information on maintenance management, review ATP 4 33, Maintenance Operations, and DA PAM 750 3, Field Maintenance Operations, available at armypubs.army.mil.